Hello and welcome this morning to the second edition of the Pelham School District Today for the 17-18 school year. My name is Dr. Betsy Cox and I am here today in my capacity as Interim Superintendent for the Pelham School District while a search is underway to find a permanent superintendent to begin July 1st, 2018. Today we have with us some special guests from the Pelham Memorial School. I will ask you to introduce yourselves to the viewing audience. I'm Jesse Harlander. I'm the assistant principal at Pell Memorial. And I'm Elisa Saunders, and I'm the band director at Pell Memorial. And clearly today we are going to be talking about the burgeoning and exciting band and instrumental music program at the Memorial School. <coughs> so please describe the current program at the Memorial School to us. Sure. So we offer a concert band for grade six and then a joint concert band for grades seven and eight. And then that's during the school day. And then our after school offerings, we offer tempo tantrums and chamber ensembles. Tempo tantrums? Tempo tantrums. What is yeah. that? So <laughs> tempo tantrums is basically jazz band, but we wanted to be able to branch out into some other pep band type stuff, rock music. So... A kid came up with that name and we thought was so great we kept it. That is great. That's wonderful. Sounds like they would have a great time in that group. They do. Yep. Okay. Well, who can be in the band? Um, anybody. Anybody can be in it. Most kids start at PES. They have a huge program at the elementary school, but we will take anybody, any beginner. Um, yeah. And if someone expresses an interest and wants to get into the band, how do they do that? Is there a recruitment day? Is there a time to come and look at instruments? How do you handle that? Uh, we do it a few different ways. In the summer, we offer a four-day band camp at the elementary school okay. that anyone in grades four through six can go to. So if you're going to be a beginner in sixth grade, you can sign up and take that class. Um, Mrs. Weigler and myself and some high school students teach that to get the kids a little bit of a head start. Um, otherwise, kids a lot of times will just come to open house the meet and greet day and just say they want to be interested. We usually have a five-day kind of grace period where you can test it out and then decide whether you want to be in it or not. We do um, have some instruments available for kids to take home and try if they mm -hmm. want to. So. Okay. And do they, otherwise they would rent or they, buy? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And who do you do that through? Um, we do it through a few different places. Our company that serves the school is Music and Arts out of Manchester, but okay. I know there's music stores in Derry and Drake that the kids use too. Okay, very, very good. And so tell us about how we fit a band program into a school without a music room. Creatively, <laughs> creatively. So uh, originally when I started, we were housed on the stage in the Memorial School, which isn't very large, and we outgrew that. Um, and then we moved to a new room, which was previously the computer lab, and we've outgrown that. So right now, wind players, so flutes, clarinets, anyone who blows into their instrument is housed in room 110 for their lessons. instruments are on the stage because we are very fortunate to have a very healthy percussion group and a lot of equipment. Um, and then every day of the week we set up and tear down the gym so that the kids can have full rehearsal in the gym. Wow, so that is the time obviously when the gym isn't being used by gym classes. Correct. So 
this working around the building affect the building as a whole from the administrative point of view? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's challenging for any teacher to have to work out of three different locations and not being housed in one location. I mean, oftentimes, Mrs. Saunders here, I see her running back and forth between the hallways in between classes, and transition time isn't really that extensive either, too. So it can be challenging, and it can also... Um, impact the learning environments of other students too. You know, if we're looking at operating in three different locations um, and we don't have a proper soundproofed room, um, you know, it's an older building. It, it echoes pretty often. Uh, no matter where you are in the building, you can either hear the percussion going on in the, uh, in the cafeteria and gymnasium from the opposite side of the building. If you're at the main office, you can oftentimes hear the, the band rehearsing um, down at the, the uh, longer end of the north side of the building next to the computer room. So we also have services that occur upstairs for some students. Uh, we have classrooms that are abutting uh, some of these rooms too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's challenging. It can definitely be, um, you know, distracting to some. Um, but, we, you know, we're, we're working with what we have, the best with what we have. So There you go. I was going to say it's like having a piped-in stereo system throughout right. the entire yeah. building. <laughs> we do our best, but 99 kids can only be so quiet. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, with the uh, wonderful music that these students learn, um, how does the band reach out to the greater Pelham community with what they do? Okay, so we, um, we actually have a community performance coming up December 1st. The 8th grade band will be playing at the Southern New Hampshire Festival of Trees mm. starting at 6 o'clock. We've done that the last few years. It's a great... It's a great time. It's a great event anyway. It's a lot okay, of fun where for the is kids. That? Sure, it's at the Town Hall. Okay. And um, the festival, I believe, is open from 5 to 9, but we're going to begin playing at 6 o'clock. Okay. Do the students, are they playing outdoors? Nope. There's a stage, a stage. inside. They, a lot of Christmas trees are set up in there. People sponsor different Christmas trees, and then we oh. play on the stage some holiday hits. About mm -hmm. And about how long will you be playing? About an hour. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. 
are free, open to the public. So uh, the next concert, the winter concert, is December 12th with a snow date of the 19th, just in case. And what time is that? 7 o'clock. They're and all at 7 o'clock, and they're all in the Memorial School gym. Okay. Very good. It's important to let people know that. Sounds wonderful. What else do you do in the community? Um, so this year, we're hoping to have our second annual bingo night, family bingo night. Um, we usually do that in February, right around Valentine's Day. That'll be in the Memorial School cafeteria. Um, and we also do, we've finished our October concert, which is Tunes and Treats, where we have a nice bake sale and we play some pop music. And um, the high school band actually comes over and we do sort of a whole district showcase of the band oh, program. And, mm -hmm. and then we'll have another one in June. I was going to ask, how does the uh, the middle school band connect with the other school pro mu music programs? We're very lucky here to have band teachers in all of the buildings who s have a similar vision for the program. So we all work together to try to make sure we have some overlap and some visibility in the other buildings. Um, so, for example, I teach fourth grade brass lessons now mm -hmm. in the elementary school. So the kids have seen me, met me beforehand, get to see Mrs. Weigler and I working together. Mm -hmm. And then... Mr. Mundy comes down from the high school in the morning and teaches eighth grade percussion lessons. I also work um, at the high school marching band camp, so there's some continuity for the eighth graders into the freshmen there. We all go to each other's concerts. We encourage the kids to go to each other's concerts. Excellent. We have high school students that come down as student coaches for the middle school ensemble. I have two jazz band coaches, a flute ensemble, and a trumpet ensemble coach that come down and work with the students. That's wonderful. So is your background originally brass? It is, yeah. Okay. Um, so you bring your expertise down to the elementary school then? Correct. Excellent. Something else I liked last year was um, during the community, was it the Fine Arts Night, where all three bands were yeah. in um, the high school gymnasium and all playing together at the same time. It was, it was, it was, it was a That must have been scene. powerful. It really it was. We had, I mean, we, we were exploding over. We had kids sitting on the floor. We had kids uh, in each section, too. So it was a, it was it was pretty really enjoyable to to be there a part of that. That's great. Yeah. That that really is wonderful for the students to have, especially for the kids just starting out to see where they can be and what they can be doing and how well they can play by the time they get to the upper grades. That's wonderful. So I've heard some of the accomplishments of your band and and some of the things that it's done. Why don't you tell us about those? So the the program here, the kids have been phenomenal. So the last. Five years, I've taught here five years, and out of the last four, we've competed at the State Large Group Festival, mm -hmm. which I described to the kids as sort of like the American Idol of bands. The whole <laughs> band goes, you sit in front of a panel of judges, yeah. and the band performs, and you get a rating. Um, it's There's no winner. It's you know, on a rating of like A, B, C, but the, so we've been four out of the five years, and all four years, we've received the highest possible rating. Wow. Um, and... We Last year, we were lucky enough to commission a piece from Dr. Santori, who is one of the professors at Plymouth State College, mm -hmm. my alma mater. And he commissioned a piece called One And, A Two And, <laughs> and um, based on my trumpet teacher from Plymouth. And they both came down for the world premiere. Pelham mm -hmm. got to present a world premiere. And now there's a published piece with the kids... You know, Pell Memorial School's name on it that wow. could, anybody could buy and play. So that's fantastic. I also understand from a conversation we had the other day that you have students who write. I do. I have students who have gotten into arranging. Right now I have a seventh grade trombone student who brought me a whole packet of original compositions the other day. My freshman flute player who's doing the coaching the flute ensemble brought a whole score that she had arranged for the flute ensemble. It's fantastic. That is amazing. That is, is remarkable that, that students in the middle school are beginning to write for large um, bands and, and ensembles. That's fantastic. So how do you feel about all of this happening in your school? <laughs> I feel great. I mean, I, I was a, a middle school band player, percussionist as ah, well, too. So. What was your specialty in percussion? Uh, well, I wasn't the most skilled percussionist player, but um, I, so my cymbals, uh, bass drum, um, cowbell, cowbell, cowbell. Triangle. very good. Yeah, you know, I, I I brought a lot of um, enthusiasm and yeah. uh, uh, humor and fun to our band. Um, I was actually, yeah, I I was actually thinking of walking away uh, from it, um, from transitioning from fifth to sixth grade. And the sixth grade band teacher reached out to me and really you know, pulled me aside and said, you know, you should really stay. We need you. We need this. <laughs> we need this uh, character in our band group to keep us together. So we, it was great. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I had a blast. 
blast. And, and just to, I went to the Great East Festival last year and a lot of the performances as well. So it kind of brings me back into um, the excitement that I had as a kid. Um, and then even getting to watch uh, Bob um, Hatsimanolis last year yeah. um, participate in the uh, your, your the jazz band, right? The ensemble. The ensemble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he he had a guest appearance, and uh, at the time, Mr. Lane had a guest appearance too. So you know, our staff is really uh, heavily involved, and and um, really you know appreciative of the hard work wow. that Mrs. Saunders does. So. Um, you know, we, we, we want the best for the program and mm -hmm. whatever I can do and whatever we can do from the administration to make, um, you know, the band more successful, you know, we're, we're willing to go the, go the distance. <laughs> now, I understand that we have a piano that needs to be we do. moved out of the building and yeah. sold to someone in the community who might be interested. It's in very good condition. Mm -hmm. So um, this is one way to get the word out that... Uh, that we no longer need this. We have electronic keyboards, but if there's somebody interested, who should they contact? They can contact myself um, or uh, Mrs. Van Breken, the interim uh, principal, um, or reach out to Mrs. Uh, Kay, who's at the office, and we can get okay. in touch with you. All right. There's also a facilities committee looking at the uh, memorial school and its needs. And so it appears that there is a large need for a music room because there is no music room in the building. And I don't know if the public is aware of that. Uh, there is uh, there one of the general music classes is happening in a modular mm -hmm. at the present, but there is no appropriate space in the building for a music room. And this is something that has been pointed out um, by the public uh, through our surveys, our students and staff as well. So the school board will be working on that issue over the next few years, and hopefully that will help with the program and and help well it won't help with your Fitbit though because I understand yeah. that <laughs> you get a remarkable number of steps daily out of the present situation but that, is true. that being the case is there anything else that you would like to add today about this marvelous program uh, that we're running in the schools um, I just like to take a minute to thank the community and the teachers at our school and the administration. We get a lot of support. They give the kids a lot of support. We see people at our concerts in and out of the building. Um, we have a lot of great equipment. We have parents stopping in to help out. We have people coming to listen to rehearsal. It's just we're very fortunate to have this kind of support in this community, and the kids and I really appreciate it. That's fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you both very much thank for you. being here today, and carry on. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, everybody adjusted? Some straight. Push your kid burner. Alright, so we're gonna start actually at 1.30 in electricity.